Chapter 21 Save Fuel Nitin and his mother went to the petrol pump. They were surprised to see a boat, no petrol. They came back home. Nitin asked his father, How can such a big petrol pump have no petrol? Nitin's father explained, Most of the oil in India comes from the Middle East countries as India has very limited reserves of oil. If the oil tankers do not reach in time, there is a fuel shortage all over India. Oil is very expensive. Our country has to spend a huge amount of foreign currency on buying oil. Therefore, we must conserve fuel. We should not waste it. Why can't we make our own petrol? Nitin inquired. His father replied, Oil or petroleum, gas and coal are fossil fuels. They are found deep under the earth. Nitin became interested and wanted to know all about fossil fuels. Non-renewable sources of energy. They are found deep under the earth. They are derived from fossils which are the remains of decomposed plants and animals matter. They take millions of years to get converted into oil or petroleum, gas and coal. Fossil fuels are non-renewable sources of energy, that is, they cannot be replenished. They are costly and cause pollution. Do you know, coal is either mined or dug out, while oil and natural gas are pumped out. Renewable Sources of Energy There are many renewable sources of energy which are reusable, like the wind energy, solar energy, tidal energy, biogas energy, geothermal energy and the hydel energy. They all are eco-friendly. Solar energy is the best and cheapest source of alternative energy. Nitin's father took out an encyclopedia and read out. World's oil and gas reserves are estimated at just 45 years and 65 years respectively. Coal is likely to last a little over 200 years. Nitin came to know that there was a great need to conserve the non-renewable sources of energy and encourage the use of renewable sources. They can reduce our dependency on non-renewable fuel to a great extent. Otherwise, the oil reserves of the world will finish very soon. Nitin shared the information with his teacher the next day in front of the class. The teacher said, Petroleum or crude oil is pumped out from the earth by drilling. Then it is sent in oil tankers to oil refinery. What happens there, ma'am? The class was interested to know more. An oil refinery processes crude oil and refines it into useful products like petrol, diesel, kerosene and liquefied petroleum gas, LPG. The teacher answered, Oh, so it does not matter whether we fill diesel or petrol in our car. They are the products of the same oil. Nathan remarked. The teacher was amused at this and said, No, though they are derived from the same oil, they have different properties. So, before filling your car at a petrol pump, you must know whether it has a petrol engine or diesel engine. These days, some vehicles are fitted with CNG, compressed natural gas kit also. CNG is called green fuel because it does not create pollution as like petrol and diesel. It is environment friendly. Do you know, alternatively fueled vehicles, AFVs, are not as new as you might think. Over 100 years ago, when Rudolf Diesel created his prototype diesel engine, he ran it on peanut oil and thought that all diesel engines would run on vegetable oils. In earlier times, everything was done by hand, whether it was separating cotton from seeds or weaving thread into cloth. But working with hands was time-consuming and led to delay in work. Many people started developing some machines that were operated by hand. Later on, these machines were run on steam power. The machine age brought a massive change in different types of industries. Hence, it came to be known as machine age. 
different types of engines were developed to run machines for spinning the yarn, weaving or moving vehicles. Industrial revolution also led to a great increase in the transportation of people and goods. The arrival of the machine age created a great demand for coal by the railways, ships and machines in the factories and homes. The reserves of coal were fast depleting and hence the steam energy had to be replaced. The only solution was to invent an engine that could run on liquid fuels like diesel. The earlier trains used dry wood and coal. Later on the use of diesel became common. But now most trains run on electricity and most vehicles run on diesel, petrol and CNG. Efforts are being made to run cars on electricity. The tractors run only on diesel. Metro is an abbreviation of Metropolitan. The Metro Railways in India is a smart way to travel between two places in the metropolitan cities. It avoids the hustle and bustle of city roads. It runs either underground or on the elevated paths. Hence, there is not much possibility of the Metro Railways to get caught in the traffic jams. The Kolkata Metro was the first underground rail network in India where it started in 1984 from Esplanade to Bhavanipur, a route length of 3.04 kilometers. The Delhi Metro is the second Metro Rail Network in India. It is operated by Delhi Metro Rail Corporation Limited, DMRC, beginning in 2002. The Delhi Metro has a combination of elevated and underground lines, which are fast spreading all over Delhi. Many other cities are also adopting this system of transport like Hyderabad, Bengaluru, etc. So, we see that the history of the progress in the vehicles reflects the various efforts made from time to time to develop different types of engines and fuels used in them. The oil reserves are limited in the whole world. Therefore, we must take care not to waste fuel. The same money can be utilized for improving health facilities, education and other facilities to build a strong economy. Fuel should be conserved. If you can walk to a place, then avoid using a vehicle. Opt for a carpool rather than traveling alone. If five people travel together, they save a lot of money, fuel and of course the environment from pollution. So, let us pledge to save and conserve our non-renewable sources as these sources are depleted.